how's it going? <laughs> Just wanted to see if you are stressing out when I'm coming in. Oh, wasn't. So, I mean, uh, you probably can give a little introduction um, about your entrepreneurial life, what you have learned about this kind of self-quantification. And um, uh, I mean, I'm doing this like it's going over the board. It totally got out of hand once I started measuring some of things. Uh, are you measuring anything? Are you measuring right now? Or is this? Nothing. So Nothing it's unnecessary. Right so, um, I mean, uh, as an athlete, you probably used every possible tracker out there. And what have you learned? That's a tough question. Um, well, I think one of the most important and simple things about tracking that I've learned is once you decide what's important to you, then you can decide what you should track. And just the simple act of tracking actually helps you a lot to focus on that specific thing and then improve it. So one example could be sleep. It's pretty amazing, but just writing down the number of hours that you've slept every night mm. helps you to change your behavior if sleep is important for that you. That was, by the way, for me, that was the, the real uh, discovery was once I started tracking, sleep is the easiest thing you can start with, was that I, I thought I was sleeping enough, but once I put it up, I saw my weekly average, and that wasn't very good. It was like five hours or something. Mm. So in, on the weekend, I slept long and well, and I thought I was rested, but uh, it was not really the case when I was looking at the average. So then it gives you, just like in any kind of athletic performance, it gives you a number that you can improve on. So if you run 100 yeah. meters, if you don't have any number for that, I mean, what are you improving? You feel sort of that you are running now faster than the previous run, but once you have a number that can help you to optimize things, right? So, Another thing you asked, what have I learned? I think, speaking of sleep, one of the big lessons for me as an entrepreneur what happened in 2008. I was one of the many people who thought not sleeping enough is like a batch of honor. And the more I worked, the less I slept, I felt the more productive I became and kind of a more amazing entrepreneur I'm in the making. Mm. Um, and I reached a point at which I started forgetting not just simple words like banana, which is fine, because English is you know, our, my second language. But then I started forgetting my colleagues' names. And when you have a company with less than 100 employees, you should know everyone's name, their spouse, and their kids' names, and everything. But I started forgetting the names of people that I was working with every day. Mm. In meetings, I could focus for like a minute or two, and then I was on my BlackBerry at the time, and I just couldn't focus on anything. And eventually, I started asking, why is this happening to a I don't know, 29 or 30 year old, dementia or something, but I just simply was not sleeping enough. So my average was maybe four to five hours during the week and then one night, 10, 11 hours. And so I had to basically hit the stone wall to wake up and realize this simple fact that, especially when you're doing brain work, mm. sleep has Very a important. huge impact on how well your brain works. And I basically had to hit the stone wall to there is, some, there is some new research now out. We have discovered the real reason why we need to sleep. And it is, according to latest research, it's about getting the waste out, the metabolic uh, byproducts of the activity that you do during the day. So the brain cleans itself out during the night. And if you don't get that cleaning lady or man in, uh, you know how stuck the door can become and uh, you start to forget words. Um, another question, I mean, you are an Ironman athlete and you did this unbelievable feat of open ocean rowing and I think you hit some records. Maybe you can give people a like, quick like, elevator speech of what that was all about and why you did it and uh, what you, what you um, discovered. Um, well, I didn't do anything. I was just in a cabin and my wife was doing all the rowing and I was just applying sunscreen and enjoying the Pacific Ocean views. Um, but so yeah, it was about 4,500 kilometer row, unsupported, completely unsupported. Just two of us in a rowboat from California to Hawaii, about the same distance as from here, rowing to Egypt. So it's a pretty long distance. Took 45 days, three hours. Um, and the two reasons we did it, one was um, 
we Finns are kind of famous for doing crazy stuff and rowing, maybe that was one reason. And then the other one was uh, we wanted to raise awareness around dangerous bad food and more precisely around sugar and processed carbohydrates without going into the details. For the last 25 years, we've been all told that eggs and butter and cholesterol and saturated fat kills us. And unfortunately, that was a mistake. And we've killed probably 500 million people in the process globally by telling them to eat the wrong stuff. Mm. So we wanted to raise awareness around that by doing this role, exercising as much as running two marathons every day for 45 days nonstop with zero sugar, no so what was your fuel source? Um, all real foods, but it was a lot of very fatty food, like macadamia nuts. I ate about 5,000 calories of saturated fat every day. Mm. Uh, and you're the row. still alive. You're I still mean. alive, and my blood values were healthier than ever at the yeah. end of that row. So macadamia nuts, nuts, olive oil, coconut butter, uh, dehydrated beef with a lot of fat, mm. um, dark, unsweetened, 100% chocolate. That was one of my favorites. Mm. Um, yeah. Just r yes. real food. So Sami was basically breaking two Guinness World Records, right? Uh, I'm actually not sure if they're official Guinness. Let's leave that branded word out. But okay. we, yeah. we were the fastest two-person team to ever row um, mm. across that part of the Pacific. Yeah. While using fats as an energy source. Uh, that's amazing. I mean, we have been thought that eat low fat and we, th we associate fat with, you know, fat bellies and all this. And uh, I mean, it, it turns out from the last 20, 30 years of research that some of the assumptions were a little bit like over the board that we did when we started looking at the connection of cholesterol and heart disease. And um, I mean, Time magazine had recently a cover that read, eat butter, eat your butter. And as an entrepreneur, I would never skip my eggs, for example. Eggs are amazing source of everything you need for the protein synthesis and for, the full, 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 for a fully functioning brain. Uh, vitamin B, for example, B12 and so on, very important. And um, so my question to you about uh, the kind of diet is how important you think diet is, not just in open ocean rowing, but every day when you're doing work on a computer sitting or running from one meeting to another? Uh, well, I'm not a doctor, a nutritionist, a dietitian, so I have to be careful what kind of <laughs> thoughts and opinions I share. But um, it is amazing to me that at least in the US, you can become a doctor and you don't take a single class about nutrition at school and you become a doctor. And, you know, we run two, three, four thousand calories of stuff or mm. a kilo of stuff through our bodies every day. So that's the only stuff that goes in besides drinking and breathing. Mm. So I think food doesn't, it's not rocket science. We are built and made out of mm. whatever stuff we eat. You, and you, you are what you eat. More mm. specifically, uh, again, these statistics are from the US, but two people out of three in the United States today, when they die, they die directly because of what they've eaten, or more importantly, mm. what they should not have been eating. Right. Two people out of three who die in the US, and I don't think Finland is far off. Mm. So the diseases around diabetes and obesity, and the related diseases around that, uh, two people out of three die because of they ate the wrong stuff. Right. It's pretty sad. <laughs> As an entrepreneur, I've seen that the brain requires enormous amounts of energy, and I mean, it's fat, basically. So it's sort of, it's kind of logical that we would eat fat if you have a fat in your brain, basically. And if you eat low fat, you replace that with sugars. And uh, I mean, having a blood sugar going like this all day long, so you're, that you are in a coma after your lunch time, I mean, it's, you're not going to perform on your optimal level. And um, my own diet is that I try to eat mainly proteins and fats in the morning. Uh, for lunch, that's more of a low carb kind of thing. And after that, I just let loose. I mean, in the evening, I don't have to, w once I eat my dinner, I don't have to like uh, stay awake or anything. So that's when I have my carbs. What is your like rhythm in this eating? And do you snack between? Uh, it's highly secret, so I can't tell what I eat. I'm so not going to say. Uh, well, broadly speaking, uh, 
macronutrient-wise, I ate about 75% fat, 20% mm. uh, protein, and 5 or 10% carbohydrates, even right. when I exercise. Mm. Yeah, um, and I think keeping inflammation at bay is really key yeah. here, because if you have inflammation, especially low-level inflammation, that's when you start to get all kinds of things like leaky gut and uh, the kind, wrong that kind That sounds of, pretty bad. That's, that's not very good. And low, I mean, the kind of inflammation is also behind then the calcification of the veins and so on. So keeping the inflammation down is very important. It's, it's linked to what you eat. It's linked to sleep. It's linked to exercise, not over-exercising, but exercising sort of enough that you, keep, you sort of uh, keep on triggering the right kind of hormones in your body. And uh, that helps with insulin resistance, uh, with, with the, your ability to control blood sugar in the first place. Yeah. I, I should add, every time I talk about food, people, very interesting. What do you actually eat? So the, the one sentence simple thing is I buy real whole foods and mm. cook at home for the most part. So. That's the most important thing. You buy real whole foods that are not in a box or package, and then you cook at home. Exactly. Pretty much everything else is a rounding error. But if you stick to that, most of the problems go away. But when you go to the supermarket, never go to any of the aisles in the center. I mean, that's where the crap is. So try to go around. Like That's where you have the cold and the salads and, uh, and so on. <laughs> OK, um, what is your advice to entrepreneurs today? You have burned the candle from both ends. I have. We have both. I mean, we have been there. We have done the mistakes. We haven't remembered the words or the names of our employees or have suffered lower level of energy, brain fog, all of these things. So where should people start? I mean, if they are interested in improving their performance and uh, upgrading themselves. Yeah, well, especially if you're starting a company, there's some constraints. So you end up working long hours. There's just no way around that. You end up working at odd times, so phone rings Saturday, Sunday, and sometimes, especially if you are the founder, like the buck stops there. You have to take care of stuff, so there's just some things you can't get away with. But um, I think I focus on two or three very, very simple things. So one is just recognizing the importance of sleep, mm. and. Lack of sleep is not a batch of honor. So recognizing the importance of sleep, so that's the number one thing to me. Um, two is, since you have very limited time, uh, something has to go. So I try to simply my, my, simplify my life. Mm. So things like some of my friends say, you always wear a black t-shirt. Do you only have one black t-shirt? I say, no, actually, I have 20 of them, but I only have the same kind of clothes, so I don't need to spend any time thinking about what I wear. I just take one of those 20 things and it takes five seconds. Mm. You could spend 20 minutes thinking about, I mean, I like people who dress well, that's fantastic, but yeah. I just don't have the time to think about what I wear. So that's one example. Did you learn that from Steve Jobs? Um, yes, he wears black. I, I, I don't know, he, 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 maybe that was his logic as well, I don't know. Mm. Um, and then other things in life, how you can simplify, like grocery shopping mm. takes you all the time. Maybe you figure out what, kind of food you need and it's delivered every Monday to your door or some of those mm. things. So mm. simplifying life is extremely powerful in helping you focus mm. on the things that matter, such as right. sleep. So that's the second. And the third one is um, uh, building a company is absolutely not a sprint. So you have to have the mindset that this is going to be a marathon. And in every marathon, there's a couple of hills, so other things where you have to sprint. So this could be an all-nighter once in a year or twice in a year when you really have to deliver for the customer or something else. But you have to think of it as a marathon. So pace yourself, do the things that will keep you healthy in, in the long mm. term. Uh, some entrepreneurs think that it's just the one quick sprint and then something amazing comes out of it. But mm. building a company is like a 10 year journey at minimum. Right. So what I hear you saying basically is if you're a high performer, you start to recognize the different patterns in your life and uh, optimizing some of the things that matter most, having more sleep. And uh, what I see many of the high performers doing is really they're very good at time management. They're very good at making sure that specific things uh, are done. I mean, your routines with your T-shirts and all of this. So eliminating all kinds of cognitive, like, uh, package or overload that you get during the day. I mean, we have so little 
decision-making capacity every day, if you burn it out into small things, yeah. I mean, you're not going to make the big decisions either. And there is one, one very specific like biohacker uh, kind of principle in the biohacker ethic, and that is try to discover what is the 20% that results in 80% improvement in your case. It's not that you work 12 hours, 16 hours, 24 hours, all-nighters and all of that, but the, the real I mean, ninja or Jedi in the room is the one who is make, able to make the same that someone makes in 12 hours, in a couple of hours, by only focusing on the right things. There is this Italian mathematician, Pareto, and he, he had this law, 2080 principle. So try to discover what is the 20% that in your case results in the 80% of improvement. I think that's when you will discover that you have actually more time to enjoy the things that matter most in your life. Isn't that right? Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, Sami. I think we are, we are pretty much done here. Okay. Thanks.